second person in this room with you. Um, started training camp, one of my favorite times of the year. We get our players with no distractions, right? There's no school. Um, they're ours all day. There's no time limitations. And we get a chance to really get better. I think this is the time of year where you make your most improvement. You're doing it every day, six days, and then you take a day off. Um, you meet with them. They immediately get feedback off of video. So it really is the most important time for every football team. Not that the other times aren't important, but I think this is, uh, this is a critical time for our football program. So I'll open it up for questions and uh, try to help you as much as I can. Greg, do you have to do anything different with this camp? Because it's the first time they've been in a training camp environment in basically two years. You know, the fact I know you had the run up to last season, but that was a lot cooler, uh, more condensed. Yeah, and you know the way the way camp is set up uh, by the rules, and there's some rule changes this year, what you can and can't do during certain days and what have you. But you have we the way we do it, we practice in the morning. And we meet in the afternoons, and then we have our jog through, or walk through at night. Um, so there's plenty of time to get everything done. They get a good rest in the middle of the day, uh, which is equally important to all the work we do. Um, but our guys have not been in a training camp like that. Last year, I told them that wasn't training camp. That was going to school and practicing and getting ready for for a season. So it wasn't getting ready for an opponent, but it still wasn't training camp. This will be. This will be a little different and different than they're accustomed to even. You know, we're staying on campus and in a dormitory and all fun stuff like that. So, um, but I, I can see the excitement in the building. The guys are jacked up. A couple of the players have already been in to see me and just, you know, ready to go. So that's fun. It's the energy is really, you know, you can feel it. Is there any differences from your first training camp in the way you structure it, maybe the strength and condition leading up to it and, and how it kind of is all going to play out? Well, it's, you know, that's a good point in that I think we're ready. You know, as I've said, I've shared with the team, summer conditioning, summer training is to prepare to have a good training camp. So now we have to have a great training camp to have a great season. Like, I think it's one step at a time, and you can't put one, can't get out of order on that. So they've trained really, really hard. I think they're physically ready. I think they're mentally ready. And academically, we're in good shape. So all those things are, are positives. Now we got to go. Now it's actually, you know, doing the hard work because it, it is hard, right? I mean, it is from when you wake up to when you go to bed, it's football. But that's why, you know, I often say we need guys who love the game. You know, that's why I say that because this isn't easy. Greg, uh, two-part uh, question on your defense. Um, just in general, what's your uh, defensive philosophy? Um, is it multiple base at this point, right? Multiple base, 4-3, four, 3-4 three, three, four could, could, could be either way. And then I think we asked you in Indy about the offense, having all, the, all these starters back, being more creative with Sean, same coordinator. But you also have the same defensive coordinator, and you have nine of 11 starters and a bunch of guys on the two deep back. Does that allow you to be more creative with what you want to do from a defensive standpoint? I think what it allows you to do is do what you do, but do it better, right? Because you have more cumulative repetitions. I don't think it's necessarily always more. More isn't always better. Um, you just have to do things better. Now, will there be some tweaks? Sure, every offseason you tweak this and tweak that to make it effective against what you're going to see, right? So you look at, you know, our training camp is to prepare for the whole season, right? Although we know that Temple is coming on September 2nd. So about, give or take, 10 days out is when you go into game week preparation. So before that, it's, it's an entire, you're preparing for the entire season. So there's some things we're going to see later in the year that are not customary that we have to make sure we get repetitions at because otherwise we'll, you know, we won't be ready for it. In, in three practices, you won't be able to get ready for it. But you're multiple at this point? I mean, you're, yeah, you're, defensively, multiple, be able to 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, that kind of look, you know, coverage-wise, uh, multiple coverages. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, you know, it's what we've done, tweak this, tweak that. Um, but it's um, something that I think our players are now more comfortable with than they were certainly last year. Same thing offensively, you know. Um, there's just, it's not necessarily like different plays, but different things you can do within each play, within each 
scheme within each family when your guys are more familiar with it that you can make it you know you can go faster you can go multiple plays you can do a bunch of different things whereas when you're learning it literally you just try to hope that you get up and line up and do it right so uh, and you know you got to be careful right because the temptation is to do some do more now that your guys have I'm a big big believer in multiple reps cumulative reps at getting better at something because the team that you're going against they've been doing the same thing so you really have to execute at a high level Greg, this summer we saw Mohamed Toure introduce himself at camps as a defensive end, and then he started working out on Twitter with defensive line trainers. Yeah, do you see him as more of like, um, I guess, the traditional R um, position that you used to have, like a Khalil Gold type uh, mold? I think he's capable of doing both, Richie, so I think that's what we're going to do with him. When a guy has the ability to do both at a high level, then we're not going to um, pigeonhole him, so to speak, right? We're going to let him do both. Now, he's done less of what... You know, he's rushed the passer all last year, but he's done less early downs playing on the line of scrimmage. So he'll get a little more work at that this preseason, but he's going to be able to go back and forth. Greg, uh, we know that Noah is going to be the starting quarterback um, in the training camp. Do you, what do you want to see from Cole and Evan to kind of, you know, maybe take the next step for them to be the name, name the backup? Well, I think it's going to be purely who runs the offense better, right? And everything that goes along with that. So that's the cerebral part of it, making sure you get everybody lined up, everybody's in the right place, um, running the show. And then after that, you have to be able to do the things that the quarterback does. So whether it's deliver the ball to the right place accurately, uh, or it's, you know, be able to read and be able to decide to run or give it to the running back or whatever that may be, the RPO, you know, making the, re making the appropriate read. Those are all things that the quarterback has to do. So it's, it's, you know, running the offense, executing their job, and then the leadership component that goes along with being a quarterback. Just though with Noah coming off the injury, is he, is he a full go right away, or do you kind of have to ramp up slowly with him just because of? Noah is a full go, yep. Piggybacking off that, how are you, how's the team health-wise? I mean, any injuries of concern going into this? You know, there's a couple guys that will be – limited because they've done either they're still coming back from something or they tweak something this summer that you know is not fully uh, back but overall I'd say we're in good health but again you're never you know you put together that big a group um, and you know especially this year because you have the NCAA had made a concession usually you have 110 limit but now you can bring your super seniors so we'll have 15 of them so we'll have 125 guys in camp. Aaron Young had a lot of touches last year, but it feels like we, we talk about Crookshank and Young, but we never talk about him. What did you see from him this spring, and what do you think he has to do to kind of take that next step? And what's a pretty crowded room, it was considering he do wide receiver and running back? Well, I think um, Aaron is a really a, a multiple, multiple position guy. He's a running back. That's what he is. But he can go anywhere. He can line up outside at wide out and be proficient at doing that. Um, He's a really good special teams player. So he's a very valuable guy to our football team and he really, really a smart player as well. So we're going to uh, lean on him quite a bit. First, did, did everybody make it uh, to report day today? You know, I'm going to get into that tomorrow, probably after practice. I think we're scheduled to talk tomorrow after practice, and I'll get into that because with all the different variables that are going on, um, Six o'clock will be, you know, when do we meet? Seven o'clock? I forget what time we meet. Six o'clock? It'll be interesting. I think everything's going to go smoothly, but I don't want to misinform you. So tomorrow I'll have a better answer for you. High number of freshmen, too, uh, enroll early. Did, is that going to be very advantageous for them trying to play early this season? You know, that's really become the norm in college football. So, yes, we did have a lot, more than half of our freshman class enrolled early. Um, but if you look around the landscape, at least Power 5 football, that's, that's kind of becoming the norm more than the exception. And um, there's a lot of positives. You know, initially I used to say to you guys, I hate to see kids miss their senior spring because what a fun time that is. But, you know, you're not talking about, you know, this guy. You're talking about future NFL players that this is a way to get another advantage or head start on, on that. So I understand exactly why guys do it, and I've kind of changed my, my stance on it. Um, 
And I make sure, you know, unless they vehemently don't want to, I make sure they're going back for prom, they're going back for graduate, they're doing all those things, at least that are the, the milestones of your senior year. I was hoping not to ask, to ask the COVID question. I know you talked about having to pivot, but um, the Delta, Delta variant, how concerned are you uh, affecting your program in general? And then, I mean, this might go above your pay grade, but you know, considering everything that's going on, you know, you expect it to be a full capacity for, for the uh, season opener? It's what, you know, as far as I've been told, that's where we are. Yeah. But I'm like everybody else, you know, I'm not, I do kind of live in a cave this time of year, but I, I'm, I'm aware of the Delta variant, aware of what's going on, you know, just saying our prayers and, and trying to do things right around here. Greg, what are your uh, expectations for Julius Turner and, and for him to kind of build on what he was able to do last year? I think, I think that's exactly what I look for him to do, to build on what he's been able to do. I think Julius, in our scheme, is a really effective player. And he's had the best offseason he's ever had at any, any stage of his career. He's legitimately put himself in a, in a position where he could have a, a really big year. You know, now you never know the variables that come up, right? It's a, it's a tough game, but I'm, ex I'm really excited to see what he can do. Uh, fans ask us a lot about Peyton Powell. I mean, he was kind of the first splash guy you added. I know he played safety in the spring game. Where do you think he's at and how he can contribute this season? Well, he's, he's you know, performed at safety this, uh, this summer. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. Um, Pacheco. You know, we talked a little bit about him in Indy, but you know, how important is it to, for him to maybe take another step? Maybe you know, I, I'm sure we'll talk to him at some point. You know, he's talked about a thousand yards being a goal at some point. Um, would you like to see that? It's been a long time since Rutgers produced a thousand yard rusher. Would, would that be a goal in your mind to kind of get him to maybe take another step? Now, I'm not sure. He could have a great year and not rush for a thousand yards, or he could have a not so great year and rush for a thousand yards. I don't know if that's the sta the gold standard. I want to see him do what he's capable of doing. And I thought at times last year he did. At other times, maybe not as much. And some of it wasn't directly, you know, his fault. Right? We have to do a good job up front. And then he's got to trust the plays and be patient with the plays. And when he does that, I think he's a really, really big time running back. Strong, explosive, fast, tough, you know, just has all the tools. And I'm looking for him. And I know our whole staff's looking for him to put it all together on a consistent basis. You know, we've all seen flashes. Uh, I'd like to see it on a consistent basis because if he does, he'll be as good as there is. Time for two more. Uh, Greg, what are you looking for in the offensive line in this training camp? I know some guys prefer a top five, a top eight, and historically, Coach Alrich has uh, preferred to rotate guys in and out. So, what are you kind of looking for among that group this training yeah, camp? Yeah, we that's probably the group that is the most up in the air. Um, and I don't mind saying it, it's going to be tremendous competition. There's uh, much more physically competent guys than we've had before. And some of them are the same guys. They've just changed their bodies and, and really gotten themselves in a position to play the, the position in the Big Ten. I and mean, that's a tough, tough spot to play in the Big Ten Conference. There's some really good defensive players, especially front seven players. Um, I think Coach Oreck and Coach Fallone and all that, they have done a tremendous job of building them as long as well as with Coach Butler and his strength staff. And I hope that uh, this training camp, the top five are going to clearly distinguish themselves. But like you said, we're not afraid to play seven or eight guys if they're seven or eight guys that are worthy of playing. So, um, you know, you do that at so many other positions. I think you can do that at the O line. You just have to practice that way, you know. So that's one thing that if we have the guys, we will practice that way and have them ready to go. Um, st sticking with the offensive line in the spring, Holland Pierce was the most improved player on offense. Do you see, do you see him, you know, a really fighting for a starting shot, a starting spot? I do. Yeah, I think Holland's got as much a chance to be starting on September second as any of the other guys. I mean, it's all up for grabs. That's what I mean. It. And it's not, you know, sometimes you say that's because you don't have any. I don't think that's the case. And maybe it was a year ago, and we were, but I think we have, we have some guys that can play in the offensive line. It's just how much better can we get in this next month, right? It says, you know, you walked in, you saw the countdown clock. There's 30 days, five hours, and blah, 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 right? How much better can we get? 
and it's our whole football team, but I think the offensive line is, is particularly in that in those crosshairs. Thank you guys.